God bless you, Facebook and YouTube. How you doing? This is Apostle Robert Jenkins. It is a Friday morning. We may be a minute late. God bless you. 6 a.m. Central Standard Time, 7 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. God bless you. Welcome, welcome to Divine Insight Ministries. We are out of New Orleans, and it's always me and my wife take out the time to say thank you. We appreciate everything that you do and how you support this ministry in the various ways that you do. Good to see you, Deborah Scott. Really enjoyed your post yesterday. Um, it is a blessing. The Bennett family, God bless you. Can't wait to see you here in New Orleans, Marine. As always, you're so faithful to the ministry. We thank you for it. God bless everybody. Happy Friday. And we're doing a part five today on living in the Father's house. Very practical teaching from a divine perspective. So welcome, welcome. Go ahead and hit that share button. Sister Baker, God bless you. Thank you for your faithfulness. Go ahead and hit that share button. Sister Jan, God bless you. Praying for you. And your family, God bless you, God bless you. We're still working on uh, trying to be a part of that prison ministry so we can have access to those that are there. God bless you. So go ahead and hit that share button. Start inviting people out. There's an invite button on your phone, on your tablet. that You literally can invite people out. They may be getting, getting dressed for work, getting the kids ready. They can go ahead and just hit the mute button and just listen and um it would be a blessing to him. God has been giving us some powerful words of how to live in the Father's house, and it's been a blessing. God bless you, sister. Andrews, God bless you. So go ahead. We give a couple minutes for that. We know that we are a people of prayer, a people of praise, and a people of power. And we're always praying for the young people, especially in the times that we're living in now. Good to see you, Mike Jackson. Good to see you, Michael. God bless you. God bless you. Um. With so many things going on in the world, and we as the salt of the earth and the light of the world must do our part and take our responsibility. And that's part of being in the Father's house, understanding your spiritual responsibility, how you should live. So it's been a blessing. It's been a blessing to my life and to my family's life, and so we thank God for it. Got a lot of things to say to you today, so go ahead and hit that share button. Remember to visit the videos on YouTube also. Remember that we have a page on Facebook called Divine Insight. Go ahead and, and visit that page as well. Good to see everybody. Sadana, God bless, God bless. Yes, it's been a blessing. Father, we thank you right now for your peace, the passive understanding. Thank you for clarity. Thank you, Lord, for the ability to be able to hear your voice and hear you speak. Thank you, Lord, that you always walk with us. Thank you, Lord, for the people who have been in our lives, who have helped us get to where we are today. Thank you for every step. Thank you for every journey. God, we even bless you for every so-called pain, for we have learned through your Father's house, through the Spirit, how to discern our journeys. And we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that we only, where we are and who we are because of what we've been through and what we have learned from this. So we bless you. Touch your people everywhere. Give them a heart that craves for you, that desires for you, a passion for you. Oh, God, just bless us to, to, to yearn for you. In the name of Jesus, and we thank you, Lord, for it. Thank you for clarity. Thank you for restoration. Thank you for rec reconciliation. Thank you, Lord, for your faith and joy and peace. Thank you for the Holy Ghost. Oh, God, we bless your name today. And, God, we see and speak joy because we see and speak from you. Oh, God, we see things better, not bitter, because we see things through you. In the wonderful name of Jesus, we thank you. And in your nature, all things are done. Amen. So we're going to move quickly. I got a lot of things to say to you as, as normally uh, God speaks to me in the morning and give me certain things. So I want to give you some foundation. The, the things that I'm teaching as far as in my father's house, this particular lesson, it is a lesson of maturity. It is a place, you know, um, you grow to stages like you, you're born a baby and you, you go from a baby to, they say, a child. You go from child to teenage years and you go from teenage years to adult, young adults and become adults and you go into senior citizens. And there are certain, certain times in your life that certain things um, you are introduced to that will, be a, that will be a part of your life for the rest of your life. Okay? I hope you understand what I'm saying. There's some things that you grow to like um, when you start hitting around... 40, 50, 60, you start, whatever you're doing, you're probably going to die doing that. And so that's the same way in spirituality. And what I'm teaching today, I'm teaching the mature of spirituality, which means this is how you're going to live. There's a healthy way to live. And a lot of times in our lives, 
we uh, stumble as a child. We drink milk when we first get started. But as we grow, we start eating the meat of God. And you learn to live a certain way in God. And as God begins to cut things off for you, the more you live in the spirit, the more you live in the Father's house, the more narrow your life becomes. The more joyous it becomes. And it's amazing how you'll have more joy, more joy in your in your seasoned years doing less things than you had false pleasure in your young years doing a whole lot of things. And so you become seasoned and you become content. It doesn't bother you to have a certain lifestyle of prayer. It doesn't bother you. You're not bored. You know, when you're growing in God, uh, sometimes praying and fasting and reading your Bible and studying, you still looking for more. Your flesh is still craving. You got houses that fight against other houses. And, and until you grow out of those houses completely, uh, you fill a pool sometimes. Well, this is all we do is God. Well, there's a time in your life when you move that all you do is God is a wonderful thing. And it's all that you want to do. It's all that you desire to do. I mean, you literally move into a place uh, that you can pray four or five hours and not bother you. You don't feel like you wasted your day. Matter of fact, when you go a day without praying that length of time, without travailing, your spirit is bothered. It's the opposite. And that's the type of teaching that that I'm teaching. And, and I've always been a very mature teacher. And so I teach the meat. I teach people who are called to be seasoned in God. And this is that message. And so a lot of times uh, it's become challenging to you of what I'm teaching. It becomes very challenging to you because, uh, and I hate to say that, but living this type of way is very rare. We don't see a lot of people trying to live in the Father's house. I mean, we we love to talk about it. We love to preach about it. And we love to so-called declare it, but we don't possess it. But living this life is a very mature life. And so it's a healthy way of living. It's the way you're supposed to live for the rest of your life, okay? And so a lot of things I'm going to say today, I said all that to say, a lot of things I'm going to say today is coming from that place. It's coming from the healthy place. God has taught me how to live in him. And he's taught me this for years. I know how to literally live in God, okay? I know how to live in God while you can be rich in finances, you can have all the things around you, but I know how to live in God with all those things around me as if I live outside the cave. See, there's a there's a spiritual experience that we learn when we pour uh, from God that most people don't know how. Uh, the devil tricks us, God, I feel you know, the devil tricks us that when you're poor and when you're struggling, you see it as a negative. You don't realize it's a training. Even the Bible talks about the Old Testament is a schoolmaster. Those days was training. Listen, if you raise four kids up on welfare and you've learned how to feed four kids plus the neighbor's kids, plus your, plus your nieces and nephews on welfare, do you understand the training that you've learned that when you finally get a job and you're making six figures, what you should be able to do? Because you've learned how to do it with $215 from, from food stamps. But most of the time we miss it because we're so bitter and we so we always think the devil is after us. We always we never believe that we're victorious. We always believe that something is going on that we have to challenge or that we're struggling with. We don't never believe that there is no struggle because of who I am. But when you move to that point and God moves you out of those houses that always make you see everything from a negative perspective. You know, uh, when you move out of those houses and you move into that father's house and you stay there, your fruit remains. You have learned so much from those other houses. And and, and, and and not that you learn from the negatives, but you learn to see God. Remember, I did a whole teaching on discerning God in the journey. You you discern God. And when you discern God, it's, 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 it's uh, I wouldn't say magical, but it is, it is, um, it's beyond your understanding. That when you really discern God in it and how to see God and who God really is, okay? And so you begin to live that way. You begin to live by faith. You begin to be, you, you justified by faith. You think by faith. Everything, you call those things as not as though, as though they are. And in that life, you learn that's how you're supposed to live. And these are the things that I'm saying to today. This is the way you live, okay? And it, it's sad that you had to go through to learn that level of intimacy. That's why some people don't know how to live healthy because they only get strong in God when they're going through. They don't know that learning God in going through was to learn God in everything, not to always have to suffer. You shouldn't have to always have to suffer to know how to live in glory. Those were lessons. Learn the lessons and then you live the lessons even when the struggle is not there. You live the lesson. 
I live with the intense, with the craving for God. I live with the longing for God. Good to see you, Brother John. Good to see you, Sister Williams. I long for God. I crave for God as if every day, as if I lost everything today. That's what my craving should be. I shouldn't have to lose. I shouldn't have to wake up and the car was stolen. I shouldn't have to get a call and the kids were dead like, like in Job. I shouldn't have to go wake up in the morning and, and I no longer have a job. And all of a sudden now there's a cry for God. There's a cry for answers. There's a yearly. I shouldn't have to need that. The, to, when, I, when I did lose things in life and I went after God because I lost it. When I met God because I needed something, the awe of God should have brought me back to God. The awe of God. I went there because I was needy. But to meet him, the awe of God should have brought me back to God when I didn't have a need. God is that awesome that a lot of times you meet him when you're down and out. But because he's so powerful and he's so wonderful and he's so, and his answers are the answers and his life is the life to live, that you come back to God when you're up and you're no longer down and out just because of who he is. These are the things that I'm teaching today, okay? And that you learn those lessons and you live that way. People say, man, you live as if uh, you, you, things are, are at their worst in your life. You say, no, I just love God. I don't have to I don't have to be broke. I don't have to have an issue to want to touch the hem of his garment. I don't have to be in the fiery furnace to know that he's a deliverer. I've come to know him. Ooh, I've come to know him. I, you know, when I was growing up, one of my favorite groups was was the Winans. And Marvin Winans would say, I come to know him in a very special way. I can't sing like him, but he, he used to sing that song. And I used to, they used to touch me because I come to know him. I come to know him, okay? And so I said, all I can say, what I'm about to say. God told me this in the morning. He said, when you wake up in the morning, I should be the first thing on your lips. When you wake up in the morning, I should be the first thing on your lips. When you live in the Father's house... You give your mornings to God. You literally wait for him. You know like a husband and wife wake up in the morning. Good morning, baby. That's the second person you should do is your husband and wife. I'll teach you that too. When you know how to love the father, you know how to love your husband. Love your wife as Christ has loved the church. Most people don't know how to love their wives because they really don't have a revelation of how Christ loved the church. They heard it, but they don't know it. You know, you kiss your husband. Proskuneo is one of the words for worship. Proskuneo. It really means to Kiss God face to face. When Adam, when Eve was pulled out of the side of Adam, the Bible talks about how he, she's bone of my bone. It really means they were face to face. Intimacy face to face. To behold, one day we shall see God face to face. To behold yourself. To see the image of Christ in yourself. The mirror becomes your the Bible becomes your mirror. And the more you read your Bible, you turn into what you've been reading. Very key. And so in the morning when you wake up, I'm showing you how to stay in the Father's house. A lot of times, you, your mind is not in the Father's house because the way you woke up in the morning. A lot of times the enemy robs you out of the moments of intimacy in the moments of walking with God because you didn't give God the first fruit of your lips. Be very careful of what you speak to, who you speak to first, and who speaks to you first. Very careful. When I first get in the morning, I, I want to do nothing but worship. I don't want to talk about nothing yesterday. I got to give God that first. Because even though some of those things doesn't have closure on them, sometimes in life we understand that today has a whole lot to do with yesterday and tomorrow. But I still got to consult God on how to continue in that journey. Okay? So just coming on, hit that share button. So we wake up with God on our on our mind. I woke up this morning with my mind stayed on Jesus. You got to do that. That's the key to standing in the Father's house. Worshiping God. Bowing down. Get back to prayer. Good to see you. Good to see you. Be anime, man. God bless you. Great man of God, man. Out of Charlotte. Love you, man. Miss you so much. Miss our conversations. You got to wake up with, with God being the first thing on your mind. Giving the first fruit from your words. 
having that intimacy, that quiet time with God. That's what living in the Father's house is. Okay. All right. I want to share that with you. It's called healthy living. Uh, when we first get saved, we, we deal with a sin conscience and we're trying to get free from sin. When you understand who Jesus is and how he died on the cross and he freed us from the penalty of sin and the power of sin, when you realize that you're no longer are having a sin conscious, maturity doesn't, doesn't deal with sin conscious. We deal with choice conscious. A lot of people don't have a sin problem. They have a choice problem. And you run into bad relationships and bad churches and, and you and you don't find yourself on a, a job that's not healthy for you. Not because you're sinning, but because you don't know how to make proper choices. Having the Father's mind and having the mind of Christ brings you to a place where you start having better choices because you have a healthier mind. The healthier your mind is, the better your choices are. The mind that you should have is the mind of Christ, the mind of Christ. Let this mind be in you. It was also in Christ Jesus, okay? Be not conformed to this world, but you transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you can prove what is good. Without the mind of Christ, you can't prove what is good, what is acceptable, and what is the perfect will of the Father. What is the mind of Christ? Not just knowing the mind of Christ, but what is it? The mind of Christ is that I do nothing of my own, only what my Father tells me. The mind of Christ is the mind that comes from the Father's house. I am the vine, you are the branches. But watch this, my father is the husband man. When you're in churches as a woman, and it's not dealing with a woman, it's dealing with the mystery of the church, be quiet and ask your husband when you get home. The soul should never speak outside of, of spending time with the spirit, the husband man. The revelation of that is that we talk too much from our soul and we don't talk enough from the download of the spirit. From the Father's house. In my Father's house are many mansions. Where's the Father's house? The Father's house is you. And inside of us are layers and layers and layers and layers of God. And there's a place where God meets us at. In the cool of the day. Within ourselves. Okay. Point number one for the day. In the Father's house is all the right answers. The right answers. The true solutions. And the insight of God. Inside of the Father's house, write this down, is the right answers. There are some answers that are not right. Because you can answer somebody, but you didn't give me the right answer. We know this when we go to school. I gave the answer. What's your answer? This is my answer, but your answer is wrong. In the Father's house, there is no wrong answers. There's only right answers. Money answers all things, but money is not the right answer for all things. In the Father's house. And, three, and there's three things there, sweetheart. It's right answers, true solutions, and insight. Those three for point number one. Right answers, okay? And I'm dealing with, good to see you, Brother Lee. Another great man of God. When you deal with the Father's house from responding from the spiritual place, you run into the right answers. For years, I had the wrong answers concerning why my father was not in my life. And it made me bitter because I wasn't getting the answers from the Spirit. Most people never see people from the Father's house. You see people from your house, from your experience, from, from how you interpret abandonment, how you see issues in life, how you see women, how you see men, how you see friendship. And you have never saw them from the Father's house, from the eyes of God, from the lens of love and light. We should see through the lens of love and light. From that, you get the right answer concerning your husband, the right answer concerning your wife, the right answer concerning everything in life. And until you see it from the Father's house, all the answers you have are wrong. Because the right answers come from the Spirit. This is why he that is spiritual should judge all things, even though he is the judge of no man. Being spiritual in the Father's house allow you to see it from really from what it is. Why? The right answer concerning the problem. The right answer. <laughs> oh, God, I feel the Holy Ghost. It also gives you true solutions. A lot of times we people give us solutions, but those solutions are not true. They, they don't really work. But solutions that work come from the Spirit, come from the Father's house. These are all the benefits. You know, when you work on a job, sometimes the benefits are better than the wages. Sometimes the wages can be $9 an hour, but the benefits is 100% uh, health care. It can be all kind of stuff. 401k can be in your benefits, but your wages can just be $9.
You got to understand the benefits of being from the father house. Being in the father's house, living from the father's house, speaking from the father's house, remaining in the father's house, cause you to be a healthy Christian. Why? Because you don't see things out of your own. No longer can the devil hold you to your emotions. Because you don't, you're not led by your emotions. You're led by the Father's house. doesn't matter what you've been through. doesn't matter what happened to your life. Because how you see what happened to your life, you no longer see it out of your own eyes anymore. You see it out of the Spirit. Oh, my God, I feel the Holy Ghost. Okay? So living in the Father's house brings us right answers, true solutions, and divine insight. That's what the name of this ministry is called, divine insight. God has given me divine insight how to handle what I thought was the worst things could ever happen to a human being. Robert Jenkins went through all this complaining, all this feel like he was abandonment. But when I had a divine insight, when God let me see it from the spiritual and begin to see people from the spiritual, let me see life from the spiritual, I had a divine insight. And guess what? My response to people change because of the house I live in. Okay? How you hear things, how you talk about things... All depends on what house you're in. If you are in the physical house, you're going to complain from the physical house. If you are in your own soul, your own mind, your mind has not been renewed, then it's so easy to always find everything wrong. But I guarantee you, when you live in the Father's house, you will not complain. Matter of fact, you will look at things for where they look like they are, and you will, you will declare them not to be there. The more I live in the Father's house, the less negative I have to say about church. The less negative I have to say about marriages. The less negative that I have to say about anything because I see it through God's eyes and God tells me what it is. See? And I realize the power of life and death, death is in my tongue and all those different things. I realize that from the Father's house, He don't speak it because the way He sees it. Oh my God. So it changes. And so a lot of things that I hear now, a lot of things, people may post some things up on Facebook. I'll say they're not in the right house. Because I used to say those same things when I was in that house. But in the Father's house, it's a different way of how you see it. In the Father's house, you're more peaceful. In the Father's house, you, 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 you don't respond to everything. I talked about yesterday. In the Father's house, you live a life of meditation. A life of being still. You live a life of being silent. You speak when God tells you to speak. From the Father's house. See, you're too emotional. You think too much, but you don't allow the Holy Spirit to think for you. You have never, you have never let the Holy Ghost to allow the Holy Spirit to lead and guide you into all truth. I live a life of prayer. Okay, very few things that I see now from the Father's house is really true to what I know. Half of the things that I see, I know that they're not. That's not the truth. I can see in the natural a bad child, but I know from the Father's house that's not a bad child. Now, how I raise children, how I respond to people has changed because I see it from the real answers, from the true solution, from a divine insight, who that child really is, who that woman really is, who that man really is. And so I have a different, have a different uh, 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 response to them because I know the truth. Oh, you can't get me on superficial. You can't get me on uh, what it looks like to the natural eye. Oh, my eyes won't be open anymore. I don't eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, but I discern. We have given up discernment for knowledge. Most people, just like Adam and Eve, they traded in discernment for knowledge. And now they have the knowledge of man, the knowledge of, of the fallen soul who wants to be his own God and have his own glory, rather than discern from the spirit and give God glory. Now I learn from the glory of God. The weight of God, the hard drive of God is God's glory. I shall supply all of your needs according to my riches and glory. When I understand from the spiritual place that God had, will and has supplied all of my needs according to his riches and glory, then I don't panic based upon what I don't see in my own bank account. Because I realize the right answer is not what's in my bank account, but the right answer is what's in glory that belongs to me. See, I see it from the spirit. So I'm not tossed to and fro by every wind and doctrine anymore. I walk with patience. That you, I let patience have a perfect work. I run this race with patience. I know how to run in patience. Oh, because I know how to wait. I'm talking about yesterday. Because I know how to wait. I have enough oil to wait. Okay. Watch this. Very key. 
That's, that's point number one. Point number two, living in the Father's house is living in God's isness. Now remember, I'm teaching a very mature message today. Living in God's isness. When you live in God's isness, you don't let what isn't change what is. When you live in God's isness from the Father's house, living in the Father's house is living in the isness of God. So you don't let what isn't change what is because I live in the isness. In the isness, I am always healed. I know that I'm healed by his stripes. So I live in the isness. So what I understand is that in the isness, in the spiritual house, I am always healed. So what I'm waiting for, I'm waiting for the isness from the spiritual house to be revealed in the soulish, in the physical house. I'm waiting for the download, but I never change what is because the only truth of it is in the isness or in the Father's house. Even in my physical body, if I go to the doctor, they say you are perfectly in good health. If I didn't get that from God, then that don't make it true. That makes his diagnosis and that's his understanding. But he can, I can go back later and he say, you know what? I misread it. You do have this in your body. No, I don't trust what the doctor say to say that I'm healed. I trust what God has already said to say that I'm healed. And I don't need the evidence of the physical to know that I'm healed. The evidence is in my faith. Faith is in something that things hope for. Evidence is things not seen. So by faith I declare the isness of God even in the physical house when it may be full with cancer if I may feel pain in my body but I don't respond to what's in the house of the body I don't respond to what's in the house of the natural mind I respond to the isness of God and that's how I live so I live by faith I walk by faith Ooh. you're right brother 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 Michael I wait for the natural to line up with the isness the physical house in the mental house is progressing the spiritual house always is, shall be, always was. Whoo, God. Ah. And you're right. Line up with the truth. There is this. The truth is that I'm healed. The truth is that I'm rich. The truth is that I'm healthy. The truth is that all those things are done. Uh-oh. The truth is that I am forgiven. So I don't live in guilt. The truth is, is that I'm already rich. Uh-oh. So I live in that. I'm already prosperous. Now I'm teaching you something, because when you live in the isness, you won't be you won't be saying things. See, one of the things that the old saints did not have an understanding of, and a lot of times our language reflects our understanding. A lot of times we say a lot of things because we don't have the understanding, and so a lot of times your your language shows me that you're ignorant in a lot of areas that belong to you, but you're ignorant. You don't know what belongs to you. It's like a person who don't know that their mother left them something in the wheel and they're not aware of how rich they are because they're not, a, they're not aware of what was left to them, okay? And so a lot of times your language reflects, your, your language reflects your lack of understanding. But when you get an understanding, watch this, from the spiritual house that comes down, downloads to the soul, God breathed into man, man became a living soul, our psyche should only be alive based upon the breath of God. God, I feel the Holy Ghost. Woo! Okay? When you know that, you live in that isness, and you never let nothing rob you from it. It is. Good to see you, Prophetess Michelle Summers. The isness of God, the isness of God, moves into my soul, and I accept it. And it lines up with it, because it is. It is. See? And so the old people, they used to say stuff like they couldn't wait to go to heaven. Well, I don't need to wait to go to heaven, because the kingdom of heaven is from within. It's not low here or no, low there. See, I don't have that language. I can't wait for this to happen. You know, when you move, when you start living in the Father's house, you stop having that language, what's going to happen. No, it's not what's going to happen. It already happened. See, you're in the wrong house when you say it's going to. When you say I'm trying, you're living in the wrong house. You don't have to try something you already are. You know who you be. I am that I am. I be who I be. I'm already there. I'm not trying to get there. Trying to get there is the mind trying to figure out how to get there because you haven't received what's already been done in the spiritual house. If you get back to the Father's house, you'll realize you're already there. You're already complete. You're already whole. What you're doing is you're waiting on the mind or you're renewing your mind to the truth about what is. Uh-oh. 
It's the isness. So your language changed because the more understanding you have, when I understand who I am, my language reflects my understanding. Oh, God. See? See, you say, you know what? I, I can't wait for me and my husband to be one. Y'all are one. When two came together, y'all was one. But that's from the spiritual house. You got to download, you got to renew your mind to the truth from the spiritual house. And then you'll start saying out of your mouth what is. And when you say out of your mouth what is, what is shows you what is in the physical. And the word became flesh. Now the word became flesh and dwelt among us. But the minute that they beheld it is not when it became. No, in the beginning was the word and the word was God and the word was God. It was always there. You didn't know it from the father's house. We talk and we say too many things off our mouth as if we don't have any understanding. But the more we learn from the soulless realm about the truth of the isness from the spiritual realm, we begin to say in the soulless realm what is, as it is, as it is in heaven. As it is in heaven, let it be on earth. Earth is a manifestation. Your mind is the manifestation. Your body is the manifestation of the isness. Woo, God. Of the isness. Say, are you healed? It is finished. Is means equal to. Two plus two is four. Two plus two equals four. You have to know the equal sign, the isness of God, the isness from the Father house, and your language won't be talking about I'm trying, I'm going to, would have, should have, could have. No, it is done. What is done? He give it you. He'll give it you. It would finish. He gave it you. He gave you it. You have the it factor on your life. The it factor. They say, man, he got it. Michael Jackson got it. Oh, Tiger Woods, he got it. Well, Robert Jenkins got it. What's it? It that was finished. It is finished. It. They say, come pick up your suit. You got a tailor-made suit. They say, come pick it up. They say, yep, it's ready. It's ready. The isness of it. The isness of it. Jesus finished it. He didn't say I was finished. He said it was finished. The isness of it is finished. So we declare it and we walk it from the isness of God. That keeps us safe. Because I don't have to worry about the devil stealing. You can't steal this. <laughs> oh, because it's, it's, it's in the Father's house. It's in the Father's house. Okay? So point number two, living in the Father's house is living in God's isness. Every day you wake up in God's isness. You have meetings because it's in the isness. <laughs> That's good, Brother Mike. Do you believe it? <laughs> Do you believe it? Woo! Oh, my God. Okay. Watch this. And point number three kind of ties in to point number two. We are coming out of the house. I want you to say this. I am no longer living in the house. He's going to. You know, God going to fix that. No, it's already fixed. I'm in the Father's house. Call those things as were. It's not as though they were, because they were. By his stripes, one, one, one translation says, and one, one, one scripture actually says, it's not even a translation, it says, by his stripes you were healed. Do you know you were healed before you got sick? Do you know you were rich before you became poor? That's why you go back to as it is. Because if, if you go back home, you were born in heaven. How can you call heaven your home if you never lived there? If you if heaven is your home, then you had to leave. Uh, you had to live there. One of the greatest revelations that I've learned from the from, from the from the book of Job is this: that Job had lost everything. Watch this. Job had lost his children in the physical house. It looked like he lost his children. He everything burnt up. Lost his uh, finances, cattle, all those things. And watch. Listen what Job says. Some theologians says Job is the oldest book in the Bible. Watch this. Look, listen, listen to the revelation that Job had. Job said, one thing I do know. One thing I do know. You got to, if you know one thing from the Father's house, you really know all things because all things are in one. One thing I do know. What do you know, Job? Job, you just lost your children, your cattle. Come on, Job. What do you want to know? 
My Redeemer, uh oh, wait, 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 wait. My Redeemer lives. Wait, wait, how do you know about a Redeemer if you're the oldest book in the Bible? How do you know about a Redeemer, Job? If there is no, there is, if you're the oldest book in the Bible, how do you have a revelation about a Redeemer? He has not been written about, he has not been spoken about. If you are the first book of the Bible, in a sense, as far as the oldest, how do you know about a Redeemer? He says, one thing I do know, not from head knowledge, but from intimacy with God, that my Redeemer lives. What is a Redeemer? A Redeemer is something or someone that buys something back. That was once his. When you go to the pawn shop, you're not buying your TV back. You're redeeming your TV because you once was the owner of the TV. So you're redeeming what belongs to you. If for God to say that we have been redeemed, which means I was with God before I was lost from God. Oh, God. So I was connected to God in a heavenly place. I was born as a sinner in a spirit, in a, in a physical place. But when I returned, I returned back to the spiritual place in which I started from. Woo! And if I started from a spiritual place, that means I never started. Because there is no start in the spirit. Uh-oh, we're walking heavy now. You can't, you can't start something in the spirit because there's no time in the spirit. When you understand the business, when you understand the Father's house, you understand that time and space doesn't limit what's in the spirit. So now when you speak it is, it becomes what it is. Or, uh, or in English, we would say what it was. But really, it becomes what it is. Ooh, there you go, Brother Michael. Come on, help me teach this. Before you was in your mother's womb, I formed thee. I knew thee. Come on, somebody. So I don't say, well, uh, you know what? I I'm bringing back what was. I'm bringing back to what is. No, I'm bringing what is from, where, from, from what it is. Because it always is. Uh oh, I know it sounds like it, broken English, but really it's not. The broken English come from the human mind. The spiritual mind, what is is what is. I'll put it like this. If I tell you what Jesus says, then you'll receive it. Jesus says, before Moses, before Moses was, I am. Why did he say before Moses was, I was? Because if he said before Moses was, I was, he'll be saying like there's time in between the was and the is. There is no time between the was and the is. Because the is always was and the was always is. Uh-oh, you're not getting it. The is always was and the was always is. Uh-oh, it is what it is. There, there you go. Come on, Brother John. So when you understand that, so Jesus says, before Moses was, I am. Why? Because I'm always I am. And when you understand that I am, I is the spiritual, I is the Father's house, the Father's house always is. So I am always is. You didn't know that it always was or always is what God said it was. Uh-oh. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word with God, and the Word is God because what was what is so when you understand the isness of God you understand it is so it is finished it is complete it is healed it is perfect uh oh it is holy uh oh it is blessed why because that's the language of the father's house it is in the isness of God Woo! so I no longer say I'm gonna because it is I no longer say I'm trying because it is I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, uh, I'm no longer saying, you know what, I hope that it get there. No, because it is. No, I, when I speak from the Father's house, I say it is. The house note is paid. It is. Uh-oh. It is finished. It is complete. See that? My son is free. Yes, it is. It is. <laughs> And whatsoever, when you meditate day and night, whatsoever you do shall prosper. Why? Because this is what it is. Woo! The same today, yesterday, tomorrow. Yes, Sister Jan, you got to know what it is from there. But this is the language from the Father's house that is downloaded to the soul and then and it brings the body under subjection. Why? Because this is what it is. Woo! Okay. All right, point number four. The word is not limited by space and time. Good to see you, Brother Poppy. When you understand the Father's house, you understand that you live in the isness of God. So it, it, it means it's, it's simple. It's, it's, it's real simple. It's like this. you looking for God to do something in your life. Well, from the Father's house, you're not looking for God to do anything. Uh-oh. 
Say, I got to tear down some paradise in your soulish mind. In the spiritual realm, you're not looking for God to do anything because it's done. So you go on your job like it's done because it is done. See? Because it is. Why? Because in the Father's house, we don't live on maybe, should, gonna, try. We live from it is. It is finished. It's, it is as it is in heaven. We live in the isness. So when you live in the isness, God, you're not limited by time and space. And the minute you begin to live from that isness, you'll see that it is. Uh-oh. There's a man who came to Jesus and said, look here. I got a servant at the house. He's sick. Uh, Jesus said, okay, well, I'll, come to, I'll come to your house and heal him. He said, no, I don't need you to come. No, 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 no. I understand that where you are, your word is. And where your word is, is where you are. Your word is. So speak what is and he'll be healed. I don't need you to take your time and walk. Because walking, it takes time. But is this, is instant. Uh-oh, watch this. Speak the word. And Jesus said, oh, I've never seen somebody who has so great faith. I've never seen this kind of faith, not even in Israel, not even among my own people. So he said, I'm a man of the authority. And when I say go, they go. And when I say stay, they stay. When the word was spoken, when the, when, when the, when the, when the servant, when the master got home, he asked the servant, where did you get healed? He said, about this time, the same time that he got healed was the same time that God spoke it. Because in the Father's house, it makes it instant the minute you believe it by faith. Ooh. Oh, you may say, well, why don't I see it? You think seeing it in the natural makes it what it is. You're in the wrong house. It is. It is from the Father's house. It's not is because you see it, because the doctor says it's gone. It's been gone. You only live in the Father's house. It is. Woo. You know why it takes time in the other houses? Because they are subject to time. The mental house is subject to time. The physical house is subject to time. But the spiritual house is not. We do not, we do not uh, declare it from any other house but the Father's house. It's not limited to time and space. So I have joy right now. Now, faith. This is why the minute that Abraham believed God, it was counted unto him as unto righteousness. Because it is. Now, I'm giving you something very powerful. When your mind and your body realize that it cannot operate because there is a landlord that's constantly saying what is. What is. Like right now, we be teaching. See, we think we're teaching. We think, you know, he teaches about an hour. We really don't even know what's going on. The isness. So when you get healed, you say, I got healed from this teaching this morning. Well, you really was already healed. All you did was just seen healing, healing in another house. See, I'm not convinced by the healing in the soulish house. Because if the soulish house can convince me, then also the soulish house can deceive me. I know that it was, and I know that it is from the spiritual house. So when it show up in the mental and the physical house, I just say, well, I thank God because I know it was. Because I know it is. Because <laughs> what was is what is. What shall be. Is what was and what was is what is. This is what Solomon said to us, Book of Ecclesiastics. When you understand that, that the spirit is not subject to time. It's not subject to time. Your other houses are subject to time. This is why renewal of the mind. Watch this. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. He is. That's the spirit. The spirit is quickened. So if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. There is no progress in that, right? Old things have passed away, done. But then he says, behold, here comes the time. This is the mind part of salvation. Behold all things, but come. Why is things becoming new as if it needs time, but creation was moved into the easiness? 
Because from the spiritual, you are, you is, because you was. You've been redeemed. You was already with God before you fell. Before Adam fell, he was with God. Woo! Oh. Uh, yes, yes, Sister Jan, that's it. The light that shines from the word of God on the dark places, it already was because it already is. And so you see, you see from the light what was hid in the dark. Ooh, that's it. That's what God is trying to tell us. It was our, the devil didn't want you to see it. The light was already there. He said, let light be. Let light, don't let light do. Oh, if I cut the light on, I'll see that it's already there. The moon, the stars, the grass was already there. Woo! Things become spirit is. Yes, brother Mike. Oh, I get, I get some agreements, man. We're kicking the deck. See, the spirit is bringing it to us. Now you're seeing it was already there. It was always there. Your power was always there. Your hope was always there. It always what? It manifests in time. It manifests in time, but it is in the spirit. Things manifest. Spirit is. Oh my God. Okay, okay. Woo. Point number five. In these three layers of houses, the spiritual house, the soulish house, the soulish house must be renewed. Without the renew without the renewal of the mind, you never see the transformation. Things to be transformed, turned inside out, converted. That's what the time. This is why the first Adam was born in the isness. So he's born, created, totally grown. No baby stages, no teenage stages. Adam and Eve. Eve is pulled out of the rib of Adam. She's fashioned fully grown. Why? Because they represent the isness. Jesus comes to redeem us from the time that when they sin, they introduce time and they fail from the glory. This is why the day you eat of the fruit, you shall die because death needs time to die. So disobedience brings time in. Disobedience, watch this, brings death in. This is why when you disobey God, the promises are delayed because you now interrupt spiritual time with time. And when the other, this is why 11 day journey took them 40 years and most of them didn't go in besides two. Why? Because their disobedience brings time in. Whenever you disobey God, you allow time to come in and now it takes time to see what was or what is because of your disobedience. If you, if you be obedient, you'll be able to see what is. Uh oh, watch this. And the time that God wants to release it to your mind. There's a timing of God that releases what is. But when you disobey, you delay the releasing time. Oh, God, I'm teaching today. You better get this in your spirit. You got to get this in the Father's house. Okay? You have those three layers. You must understand those three and how to operate from the Father's house to my mind is renewed, transformed. So I can prove what is good, acceptable, perfect will of God, transformation, and then I put my body in a subjection, and then I'm sanctified, holy spirit, soul, and body. Then I become whole, not just healed, because all three departments of the house, all three houses are under the landlord, under God, the Father's house, we are, do nothing of my own, but thy will be done. Not my will, but thy will be done. In the place of the skull, in the place of the mind, Jesus had to do what? Say, not my will. Nevertheless, I'm nevertheless, because I know what is. I am nevertheless, because I know what is. I am nevertheless, even if I got to drink bitter cups, if I've been through many things, divorces, lost children, whatever the key, I must know that I'm nevertheless. Not my will, but thy will be done in the garden of my mind. And when you die to yourself, you can do anything else with yourself when you die to yourself. God can use you when you die to you. It's when you die to you that God can use you. Oh, God. Oh, my God. Okay. Heavy stuff. There is, and I'm using this English word to give us a clarity. There is... A line between each house. And so from the spiritual house 
to the soulish house. Let me put it like this. The Bible talks about how the word of God comes as, as a two-edged sword cutting between bone and marrow and, and thought and intent. The word of God is so sharp that between how you think your thoughts and the intent of what you meant by the thought, the word is sharp to go in between. The intent of what he said and versus what he said, the word of God can go in between, okay? When you understand there is a line that the sword draws, the sword draws. And so in between my spirit and my, and my soul, I must go through the word or go through the sword. In order for me to come out of the mental house and to see transformation, I go through the sword. I go through, in order to get back to that garden, he put two swords there, chariots. And if you come to this, what this is what God really meant when he says, any man who see my face will die. He said that it caused death to see the face of God. But he wants us to see his face. That, that scripture is not meant to stay away from God's face. Don't You don't want to see God's face because you look God in the eyes, you're going to die. Death is necessary to see his face. That's all it is because he tells you to see his face. If my people will call on my name, turn from the wicked ways. Okay? Seek my face. Seek my faith. Why would God tell you to do something to bring death if death was not necessary? So the word of God, you're right. It's to separate, okay? Watch this. Separate, okay? And so, But it's what I go through. It's like, Brother Mike, if I took a, a, a real sharp sword and I pointed at your heart, Brother Mike, I got a sword in my hand. I pointed at your chest, at your heart. And I said, Brother Mike, come to me. This is what God does. In order to get us out of our own mind, to remove us from the, from, from the mental house, to remove us, and I'm going to get to the, what it takes to get out of the physical house. It's a different, there's a different line, sword, between the spirit and the soul and the soul and the body. You must understand that. So when it comes to physical things in your body, there's a difference that you have to go through to get to the soul. But to go from the soul to the spirit, because of Adam's sin, there's a different sword. This sword, you got to come through the word of God, from the soul to the... So in other words, in your thinking, in order to live in a father's house, you got to come through the sword. You got to allow God to point the sword towards your heart, and you walk to God, knowing that dying and living will become instant. You would, there would be one part of your death, but another part of your life. You would die as the caterpillar, but you become it alive as the butterfly. Transformation. Metamorphosis. Watch this. So you are literally changing because you're moving from one house to another. You can't stay, God of the Holy Ghost, in the caterpillar house when you've been born to be a butterfly. You can't stay in carnality when God wants you to move in the spirit. Come on, somebody. See, in, 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 in a mental house, you'll stay black conscious. You'll stay religious. You'll stay uh, in the church, but you won't move to kingdom thinking. But you must, through the word of God, come out of that house. You got to come. You got to change denomination. Woo, God. You got to come out. Of, as when the increase of God comes, as we grow, we come out of houses. In my father's house are many mansions. You got to come out. So in order for a penny to become a nickel, one penny is one cent. Five pennies is five cents. Watch this. But I don't need to go after something that takes five attempts as a penny if I just change the house and become a nickel. When I become a nickel, I can do what took me five times to do as a penny. I can do one time as a nickel. Thank you. Thank you, Brother Michael. That's it. Hebrews 4 and 12. Okay? That's it. Study that scripture. I love you, man. Thank you for that, man. That's what I'm looking for. Okay? So, because we learn that we're going to grow together. We're going to grow from the Father's house. So, when I, when I change from the house of a penny to the house of a nickel, what used to take me five attempts as a penny, I can do with one attempt as a nickel. But as a nickel, it takes me two attempts to do what I can do with one attempt if I would go to a dime. Uh-oh. 
When I was a penny, I was smaller than a nickel. When I become a nickel, I'm bigger than a penny, but I'm five times greater as, as, as one nickel as I was as a penny. As a dime, it gets smaller, but I'm ten times what takes ten attempts to do. As a penny, I can do one as a dime. When it takes two attempts to do as a nickel, I can do one attempt as a dime, but I got to change houses. So when I change houses as a penny to the nickel house, I increase, but my attempts get lesser. Uh-oh. As a dime, I seem to decrease in size, but I increase in value. Woo! God, we preach it today. I decrease in size, but I increase in value. Watch this. Penny, small, nickel, a little bigger, dime, a little smaller. Watch this. I'm decreasing, and then I'm increasing. Who who humbles himself, penny, shall be elevated, nickel. But when I go a nickel, I humble myself. I go back down to a dime, then I'm going to be elevated as a quarter. What it takes as a dime, it takes me two dimes and one nickel. Now I got to connect to other people. Watch this. To produce a quarter, when as a quarter, I'm 25 pennies. Watch this. Watch this. I'm five nickels and I'm two dimes in one nickel or two dimes in five penny, but as one quarter. What takes me 25 attempts or three attempts as a dime and a nickel, I can do my one attempt as a quarter if I do what? Change the house. Change the house. You got to change the house. Woo! You got to change the denomination. You got to change and constantly move into the Father's house. Change the way you're thinking. Let his mind be in you. Be not conformable. Be you transformed by the renewing of your mind. And when you go through the word of God, woo! Woo! When you go through the word of God, you change it. Caterpillar the butterfly, you change it. Constantly, constantly. Watch this. As a quarter, it take me four attempts to do what one dollar bill can do. One dollar bill. God. I'm almost running out of time. I wish I could break this down even more. One, one attempt. But I got to change the nomination. As a coin, I'm made out of silver. As a dollar bill, I'm made out of paper. Paper come from what? Tree. The more I allow God work, and I meditate on it, I become like a tree. I become more valuable. So now I'm a dollar bill. It takes 100, 100 pennies to do what one dollar bill can do. It takes 20 nickels to do what one dollar bill can do. It takes 10 dimes to do what one dollar bill can do. It takes four quarters to do what one dollar bill can do. What are you killing yourself to do because you won't come to the father's house? And I apologize for the cold. What are you struggling, fighting, sweating because you haven't made a change in your thinking? You haven't accept what is. You haven't accept what is. You're a butterfly. That's what is. You've always been a butterfly. You just needed time in your own house to know that that's not the house you were born to live in. You were born to go through that house, but never to live in that house. Whew. As a dollar bill. And remember, the top of the line in one at one level is the bottom of the line at the next level. I'm going to say this last principle and I'm going to go. I feel a shift in the spirit. Okay, I want you to hear this. This is for somebody. This is for all of us today. Watch this. God says, come on, come to my house, change, change, come up higher, come up higher, come up higher, come up higher. Watch this. The top of the line BMW, the top of the line BMW is not greater than the bottom line Mercedes Benz. The bottom line Mercedes Benz has a better quality than the top of the line BMW. You know why? Because it's in a different house. I'll give you an example. You go to school. 
you are in the kindergarten. That's the bottom line. When I was going to school, kindergarten was part of elementary. So when you're in the elementary, you're at the bottom line. You, 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 you kindergarten. Now you go to the, when I was going to school, sixth grade was the highest you can be in the elementary. So you're in the sixth grade. You're at the top of your class in elementary. But you can't stay in elementary. You got to change schools. In order to grow, you got to change schools. You got to change houses. So you literally leave that school and go to another school. Now you're in junior high, right? You're in junior high. You're in the seventh grade. When I was growing up, you're in junior high. You're in the seventh grade. But guess what? you at the bottom of junior high, but you're higher than the sixth grade, who's at the highest at elementary. At elementary, a sixth grade is at the top of his class. But in junior high, you're a seventh grader. You're at the bottom, but you're higher than the top at the last school because you changed schools. The father's house is learning how to go from one school to another. Every, every house has its own laws. Every house has its own mindset. You must know the mindset of the father's house. And the father's house has mansions in it. Layers and layers of law, spiritual understanding, revelation, mysteries in the house. And so, but the bottom line of the seventh grade is higher than the top of the line at the sixth grade because two different schools. Then you go to the ninth grade in junior high. When I was going to school, ninth grade was the highest of junior high. So you're at the top of your class. But the minute you change schools and go to high school, you're back at the bottom. But you're not at the bottom. You're at the bottom at the new school. At another level, you change houses. Woo! And different classes are being taught. What you learned in the sixth grade, you're not learning in the ninth grade. Uh-oh. But you're at the bottom of your class, high school. You're a freshman in high school. Ninth grader. But, you, but you're no longer elementary, you're no longer junior high, but you're in high school. Then you finally go to high school and you go to a 12th grade. You're a senior. Woo! God, I feel the Holy Ghost. You're a senior. This is your third school, right? You're a senior, top of the class. But the minute you come out of that school and you go to a college, a university where you and I verse, the university is the versing. It is, it is the conversation between you and I to go higher in education. Education means to induce, not to put in. The problem with our educational system is that we're putting stuff in. With the real word for education comes from the word educe, E-D-U-C-A. To induce, which means to pull out. You don't educate the apple seed. You pull out the tree that's in the apple seed. You don't educate the, the fish. You put the fish in the water and he swims because he's been born to swim. Oh, the, who teaches the bird how to fly? He flies because flying is in him. When you have true education, you pull out what's already in there. That's why there's no training for teaching dogs how to bark, because barking is in them. There's no training for teaching a bird how to fly. Flying is in him. In the Father's house, you see what's in you. Uh-oh. And when you change houses, what's in you is released. Woo! So you leave high school, top of your class, you go to college, university where you and I burst. Watch this. The minute you do that, you're at the bottom of the class, but you're at a whole new school. You're at a whole new school. You're in college. You're a freshman, but you've been through first dimension, elementary, second dimension, junior high, third dimension, high school. You're in your fourth dimension, you're in college, but you're a freshman. Then you go to college, watch this. You graduate, you have your degree, and you start your first day on the job, and you're at another school. You're on job training because you're constantly changing from faith to faith, from glory to glory, from house to house. When you get into the spiritual houses, you no longer change houses outside of the house. You change houses within the house. A lot of people are not enjoying or living or accessing or accessing the houses that are within the spiritual house. Because in the spiritual house are many mansions. Layers of revelation. Mysteries. Third heavens. Ooh. 
heavens upon heavens, firmaments upon firmaments, faith upon faith, glory upon glory, layers. Father, we bless your name that you teach us how to live in your house, how to access the power and the authority, how to live in the right mindset. Oh, God. And we bless you for it. Thank you for your people who lives in that house mm, that are now conceiving what is and they're living by with what is. It's done in your nature. It's done in your name. Thank you, Lord. God bless you. See you Monday, same place, same time. Come on. Uh, many people have been asking about supporting the ministry uh, it, it's on the flyer. You can do that. I think it's uh, PayPal, paypal.me slash RJ. Go to my page and look that up. Also do have a cash app. You know, I trust for the Holy Spirit to lead you to give. So you don't, you don't see me coming on giving. And I'm only doing this because people have been asking, how can I give? So if you really want to know how to sow it to the ministry, go on our page or the, or the flyer that we send and you'll see the PayPal Thing there and you'll see the cash out this i want you to be led to give and never forced to give okay and so that's why i say that i don't say that much and every now and then god will lead me to say it but god bless you uh see you monday same place same time i don't know if we're gonna continue with this i'm hoping that we are there's so much god giving me but sometimes god gives me something for you and the rest of it may be for a book and so I, I'm, I'm praying to get clarity from the father's house what should we do? But enjoy your weekend. Have a wonderful time walking God's favor. And remember, when you live in God's house, you're living from what is. The isness of God is. Love you. God bless you. Thank you for your support and all that you do. And have a wonderful weekend. And enjoy the rest of the day walking God's favor.